Hey, welcome to the Cut It Out podcast, where we talk everything about collage and paper craft. I'm super excited to have Morgan Jesse Lappin here. Uh, he's been making collage comics. I've been making collage comics. We're hyped. Now, for this episode, I want to do a slightly different introduction, because over the past year, as I've been talking with friends about my projects, and specifically comics, I realized that a lot of people kind of have their heads stuck uh in the 90s or 80s with the comics that they grew up with because before I started making my own I thought the same way I thought comics were just Superman and X-Men and stuff like that so I want to share with you um, some books from my collection that specifically have collage in them or they're just super weird because I think that will enrich the conversation um, for both uh, Morgan and I and the listeners so uh, the first one I want to show you is this one is called Loop of the Sun by Daria Tesler. Now, this is a spiral bound, um, I guess some people would call it a zine. Um, and this thing is absolutely insane. You could smell the ink on it. There's so much ink on this thing. And as you can see, we have, oh, a story with all sorts of collage pictures and her own illustrations in here. Um, this one right here is um, Heroical by David Plunkert. As you can see, it's a, a, a huge uh, magazine-like format. It's got collage on it, all sorts of wild drawings, even more collage um, things right here. Both of these uh, magazines, comics, zines, whatever you want to call these particular ones, I believe they're printed on a risograph machine which is a cool way that um, makers have been creating comics that almost look like they're uh, screen printed. So these are dope. Let's not forget the history of indie comics goes way back. I just picked up this one on Sunday. This is Harold Head number one, Hitler's Cocaine. Can't wait to dive into this one. I'm sure it's uh, a real speedy. This thing is crazy over here. This is a graphic novel I picked up the other day. This doesn't have, um, this is called Canker. This does not have collage in it, but I'm just absolutely floored by the art and the storytelling in it. Um, boys and girls, the point that I'm trying to get at here is that this world of comic books and graphic novels is so much broader, deeper, and weirder than I think um, a lot of us know about. Uh, my current favorite like comics journal right now is called Rust Belt Review. Uh, this is a collection of different random, really cool, independent comic artists. And as a collage example, it's not exactly collage, but um, this is like a digital, almost looks like kid pics original you know mac machine number one digital artwork in here and all sorts of just fun typical you know ink and lettering uh storytelling now if you're new to the game a really fun process is self-publishing your own zines okay um these are from chaotic collage i trade these with other artists and um these are very fun and liberating because it's not like you're composing some mega collage, you know, like you're cutting out 5,000 pieces of comic book hair like Morgan does. Um, just fun ways to tell stories and uh, share images. All right. So without further uh, ado, a doo doo, whatever it is, uh, let's bring in um, the man, the myth, the legend, Morgan Jesse Lappin. I don't even exist. Morgan. I, I'm, I'm a glitch in the matrix. Hey, man, aren't we all? And, dude, you have some kind of – we got to up your stats on the back of your card because you were the first guest on the Cut It Out podcast to make two appearances. So Holy it's got to be Hall of Fame worthy, buddy. So uh, just before we recorded, I said, hey, dude, I don't have a script. Um you and I have seemed to have been down the same comic rabbit hole, on some level at least. We've both been getting into it. 
um, for the past uh, at least six months to a year. I don't know how long you've been into it, but uh, I don't know. Maybe you could tell us uh, what you've been up to. Uh, I mean, in regards to comics, uh, it goes way back because um, I grew up in Rockland County, New York. And uh, in a town called Nanuet, uh, there's this shop that opened up called The Wizard of Comics and Cards. I don't know if you've ever heard of The Wizard. I Well, there's only one wizard, and that's, no, I approve, I haven't, but I approve of it. I think have, I heard, have heard of it, though, yeah. Whoops. You're back. Um, but a lot of people are angry about that prize guide, because before that, there was just, I think, the comic book street guide. And that was always the go-to. And are you talking? I cut you off for a second, Max. Are you talking about the Wizard magazine or Wizard? Uh, Basically, the, store? the Wizard was a comic book shop that opened up in Nanuet in the, I guess, like mid to eight, late eighties. Okay. Um, and the guy who opened it up, uh, who started the shop, just had a million connections to a ton of different artists. I mean, he even had uh, Todd McFarlane doing signings. He signed like ten of my comic books. And sweet. Um, the author of Spawn. I, yeah, I should have grabbed the uh, the picture of me and him. I'm just like staring at him, like holy shit, you know. Um, and that was early on. That was probably like, oh my god, like 19 maybe 89. Okay. But um, it's when he first started doing like Spider Man. I think somewhere around like 297. I forgot. I I my my knowledge is a little bit mixed because. So so you're saying you you grew up near like a. A really awesome, iconic, somewhat book. iconic. Okay, right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually, they started their own uh, price guide, but it was kind of skewed because it had to do with what comics they had in their shop at the time. You know, manipulating values and stuff like that. So, was there an association with Wizard Magazine? Because I know that was a very popular uh, magazine that had, um, uh, I don't know, all sorts of stuff about comics, what was coming yeah, out. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. It was the Wizard, and the first one it showed like. Number one had like Spider Man with a wizard costume on, with a wizard hat and yes, web and whatever. But mm -hmm. yeah, that that started from that shop, Wizard. Uh, and I don't know if they still even exist, but it was an amazing opportunity to grow up around uh, such an iconic comic book store. And so there was no escape. You know, my dad got sucked into it. He was a big Thor fan for his whole life, and he even has a tattoo of Thor on his arm. He's a badass dude. And uh, so we collected comics um, early on. But uh, later on, I became a collage artist. And I, anything that I've ever used, I've always checked the value before touching it. Sure. At the same time, there are a lot of people, regardless of what it's worth, would choke us for uh, cutting, up, cutting up comics. So, you know, there's this, uh, we were speaking about this before, but there's this app called Whatnot. And basically, it's, it's a live auction show where anybody can sell collectibles or artwork or anything at all. And, um, you know, I started to notice a few things like people were like, was that damaged before you touched it? I'm like, of course it was. They're like, it, because some people get freaked out. They'll get angry. Yeah. And, there's a gatekeeping. Uh, yeah. I mean, no matter what you do or where you go, someone's going to, the more people that follow you, the more chance you're going to get someone saying something really weird or negative about you or your artwork it's just it's the nature yeah. the and there's it's plenty for reference uh for folks who don't know there's a lot a lot a lot of old comics that you can get for you know 30 cents to a dollar and the fact that i think people would be really upset that you were cutting them i mean i'm sure there's rare comics that are on, that are in dollar bins everywhere but um i mean come on like, I mean, I, I have cut up some Jim Lee's. I have cut up some number ones. I, I don't know what to tell you. I, well, me, I cut up a, I cut up a Jack Kirby 2001 A Space Odyssey uh, right out the gate. I didn't really know what I was doing. So what are you going to do? You know? I forgive you. Interesting thing. Um, and I've seen some of this. Uh, I, and I wish I had some pictures saved. But uh, Jack Kirby actually messed around with uh, collage. I think yes, he did. I have an image right here, my oh, friend. Wow. Oh, great. Super cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's awesome. That's I really awesome. like the one he did one where it was there's like a living planet called Ego. And he wow. must have taken some guy's face and like glued it onto a moon and then the it's colorized. Um I mean we could talk about this if you'd like. I, uh go for it, dude. The Jack so if you people don't don't know Jack Kirby you would probably be I would say top three to five most influential uh comic book uh people of all time. Um, you know, you mentioned Thor, um, X-Men, 
a lot of these characters that Stan Lee wrote about, um, Jack Kirby, you know, designed the costumes and, and made the artwork for. Um, right. And he has a very specific style uh, of drawing, a lot of like thick lines, you know, mm -hmm. uh, high contrast, not a lot of shading, just thick black uh, as shadowing. But yeah, he he's a master. The colors that he used at the time were amazing. I mean, very trippy, a lot of like pinks and purples and a lot of the colors that you use actually in, in a lot <laughs> of your work. Uh, it pops his his real name, and I didn't realize this. His real name is Jacob Kurtzberg. Hmm. Yeah, he sounds like he uh, he grew up in Jersey, right? Wasn't he like a Jersey guy? I just pulled it up. He New York, I think both okay. him and um, and then Stan Lee's real name is is uh, Stanley Martin Lieber. They're like, damn, our last names sound way too Jewish. We better do something about this. Uh, or no one will buy our comics. <laughs> I'm Jewish. I could say this, but that's basically probably what they, yeah. they thought. I mean, a lot of people changed their names, but at the time, I guess they probably figured it's best to like modify their last names, uh, whether or not that, that had any play in helping them you know, get to where they got is beyond my knowledge, but they did change their name. I, mean, that's I know, uh, you know, Jack Kirby, his career was so long. He illustrated everything from Westerns to romances and then Marvel, DC, you know, action hero comics. And if anyone's interested, I know a lot of his collage work was in the new gods, um, which I think came out in the late sixties. Um, and he did some as well in fantastic four. Um, but I think if you know you go to the public library, a lot of that um, Jack Kirby stuff has been reprinted in graphic novel form. And I I read that you know he was wanted to experiment, you know, all the crazy psychedelic stuff that was happening in the '60s. You know, um, he wanted to try new forms to kind of like heighten the art or like you know spice things up, you know, for the kiddos. So um, yeah, super 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 cool work and. You could almost see that he was cutting up, you know, old life magazines and stuff. Um, so, yeah, if you want to check it out, uh, I would check out The New Gods, uh, Jack Kirby, at your local library. Agreed. Uh, Jack Kirby is a rabbit hole. He's done, I mean, it, he's he's one of my favorite artists, uh, for sure. Um, but, yeah, so basically, uh, there's this app called Whatnot. I brought mm -hmm. it up before, and it's kind of like you, you have your own live auction. And a friend of mine suggested that I start my own show. It's a little bit tough for uh, collage artists. For illustrators, they can just make the magic happen, you know, immediately. And mm -hmm. with collage, you know, everyone has a very different approach. It could be a lot of, like, experimenting with different pieces and different placements. Uh, <clears throat> and that can kind of get boring with, with the attention spans today where people have, like, you know, no attention span. To see yeah. someone go around with ideas could become boring. So it was a tough transition to try to start a show on whatnot. But in doing so, I started my own comic series. It's more of a, um, a comic cover concept series because to make the comic itself, you know, would be pretty ambitious. But um, so yeah, I take a very long time. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, there's different ways to do it. If you fine tune it, you could probably get faster if you try to have in mind that, like, uh, you know, there's a time aspect to it. But um, with everything else that I'm trying to do at the same time, it would never it wouldn't be feasible. But I will go through my comics. So I started this comic called Strange Dreams. Mm -hmm. um, and each one is a different idea. But again, there's no comic book behind this. This is just a cover concept idea. And so this is the first one that I made. It's called My First, my first Acid Trip. It's hard for uh, my life. I can take it out, though. Sure. It's a lot better. So, yeah. So I created my own logo mm -hmm. on this side um mjl and then i'm numbering them and i have strange dreams and again i was like oh man this was pretty crazy because i cut each letter out and to try to keep it like you know straight across was really tough so i was like i gotta cut this down because time wise it just it took a really long time sure um and so there were a few things that i printed out but all of this here like this is from a comic book this is all from source material uh the only thing that i created and printed out is the title uh, my logo, you know, the title that I created and entered the comic collage universe. And so what I'm doing is I have like a limited se uh, print series of each one of these comics that I've made 
And right now, I think I'm up to six, and I'll, I'll, I'll go through them. So not all of them are just like funny titles. I did some like character battle mashups. So let's see, what's number two? So I did, so as you can see here, this is the second one that I made. And I was like, screw that. I'm making this easier and I'm not doing <laughs> separate yeah. letter cuts. Cause that was, that took like a, a long, too long. It's brittle too. Comic book paper is quite brittle. Well, with these, I, I actually, so I, I got a new printer. Yeah, so you printed out Strange Dreams. Right. Yeah, I I've been embracing my uh, my printer lately too. I um, particularly for for my zines because um, I absolutely fell in love with this uh, like women's like Red Book magazine at Wegmans, and it said Turbo Keto in big letters. And I'm like, well, I only want to spend four dollars once on this stupid ass <laughs> title. And so every time I need that that little piece, I just photocopy it. And then you know copy and paste or or whatever and i know goofcraft one of the guys who we've had on the show before um he i believe photocopies most of his stuff because he loves these like ballpoint pens and wheels and motors and stuff that you, he can't find a lot of so um and when you're collaging with it to me it makes no difference like you're still getting the weird paper information and all that extra shit you get when you're when you're like i don't know using right. paper you know right what kind of printer do you have I bought the one that uh, Goofcraft recommended because I, I have a policy that uh, if I know someone who has something they're happy with, I'll just ask them what to do um, because I don't want to read about the, on the internet for two hours. Right. So I just picked up a, it's called a brother something and it's, um, you know, brother and some big long number, but it can print 11 by 17 on it. Oh, and I actually yeah. just ran 11 by 17 card stock on it, which for me is a is a game changer because I could make my artist prints on it. Right. You know, I could go like, you know, nine by 12, 11 by 14. And, um, and when I want to make my, my zines, which are typically 11 by 17. And when I go and print my, my kind of first run of the comics to send out to publishers, um, I'm just going to run it on that. I, might um, do that. I, I got um, an Epson eco tank. Did you do the instant ink? Because that's that's bullshit. That's why I have this brother right here. I I had an instant ink subscription for like three years, barely used it, and then I got invited to an art show a couple weeks ago. I'm like, well, time to print, and I had 300 free prints queued up. I probably printed half a dozen or a dozen things, and it was like you're out of ink. Went to the store, bought Epson brand ink. The machine knew that it wasn't the ones that it was sending me in the mail and it said I couldn't use it and then it froze it out. It wouldn't even let me scan. But yeah. that's instant ink. So I can't I I'm publicly bashing instant ink subscriptions from HP. Don't do it. Um is that what you got? <laughs> no, no, I got okay. an Epson Eco Tank. The quality is unbelievable. Like it's it's absolutely now I'm jealous that you got the eleven. I didn't even think about size wise, but that's that's a great how much was your printer? um under 400 i think it's not that That's yeah not that. but i i did i was in a, such a pinch like i literally bought all this crap this paper didn't have time to send away to print for this show and i'm like well i'm i guess i'm gonna go to an art show to just hopefully pay back for my printer and buy some beers and burgers you know <laughs> right, right, right. um yeah. so yeah yeah, those prints that you have are huge uh, of your of your new work. That that they're oh they're yeah, that thing. I'll, I'll, I'll share an image of that. So the um, the comic stuff I've been doing, I've been making my own comic that I've been drawing, and the final book will be have collage in it as well. But um, these bad boys, here's one of them. Woo! Look at that, yeah. Mom. Yeah, I think it's badass. Um, wow. So that. I measured the dimensions of a comic book, uh, just like what you showed. And um, I collaged, um, I have different series of monsters that I've put together. Right. So this one is called um, the Scion because I have all these characters and they're all part of like a plot. And um, it was, this was recently put on a wine bottle, <laughs> uh, a much smaller version. Uh, for Litton Buffalo right. Winery. Hey man, that's a big wine bottle, man. Yeah, dude. Let's ha let's house it. Um, 
and we ended up naming it um cybernated half-life because this the concept of this monster is like um it's like a floating around like video screen robot and it's um, very kirby very kirby yeah I, I wonder if there there might be some i wonder if there is any kirby in there <laughs> oddly enough these little chunks here came from a, i think well i don't know if kirby did logan's run but this is like a transform there's like a transformer mouth on the bottom sorry i'm pointing with my mouse that doesn't make any sense um yeah there's transformers like that big purple tube stuff to the side was like cables gun right. um there's like terminator's eyebrow you know you can see skeletor in there a lot of that that's wild so this i did not print at home though this um this bad boy was printed at vinyl and put on like corrugated plastic nice again in a pinch i got invited like last minute to music is art in buffalo so this one probably ran me like 120 not 120 but i just wanted to get them out there i wanted to um because it's not 100 percent where i want it but i'm like oh i'm gonna be here i want to at least have these monsters here i printed two because like i want people to see them so when i have my show hopefully you know by next year people are like when they see the flyers ads or whatever like oh yeah we saw that you know people were taking selfies with them and stuff it was sweet and yeah, it's, that's impressive it's a beautiful piece it's hard to tell here but uh Honestly, the, the coolest parts of the collage were the damaged comic books where you see like wrinkles and tears and fibers because when they're blown up that big, it's really neat to see that stuff. Yeah, and, uh, there's, there's a lot you don't realize until you blow it up that, that big. Yeah, like I got to thank uh, Max Malone, the, the first podcast guest here, um, because um, again, in a pinch, I'm like, yo, what? What DPI do I scan my collage to print it huge? Because as high as possible, as high scan as high as shit, and then you could print right. print it lower so you don't like, you know, crash and burn uh, your printer's uh, computer. Right, right. Uh, when they try I to print mean, it, I mean, I, mine probably scans up to twelve hundred. Yeah, probably what most do. It's but great. We'll go as high as possible if you're going to be printing it out that big. Yeah. So I, I, I hopefully do about it. I want to do maybe a about a dozen of those. Um, I have a few made up and, oh, well, maybe you know about this, uh, Morgan. So um, in the old comics from the seventies, they would have these little ads for, it was called monster size monsters. And for like four bucks, if you sent them four bucks, they would send you a seven foot tall Frankenstein. I remember and, that, yes. Yeah, yeah so that's where the idea came from. Uh, that's where, so, I want to narrow it down and get it so I can do cheap seven foot tall prints. So when people come to the show, they can walk out with like a seven foot tall, creepy ass monster. I, I have an idea that I think you'd be down with actually. Maybe we, right. we can combine forces. So I have an idea to basically print out like a, a human body, right? Mm -hmm. And then a different collage artist would do each limb, the head, the torso, and then it would all be sent back and it would mm. create this one being. Hell yeah, dude. Can and I make I, a request? Can I make a request? Of course. Can I do the forearm from the elbow to the hand? Because I've been I've been sketching one out. So if you yeah. ever get to it. We'll I talk about this. We're gonna we're gonna plan this out. I think it would be an amazing project. Sweet dude. Yeah, the, um remember in Terminator too, when they like have the 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 the, the uh terminator arm like in the glass jar and shit yes. like that's what i'm like picturing a whole bunch of like sinew and metal rods and all that stuff you know i'll do more man i would, I would love to what I've, i got a vision in my head for yeah i knew you would Monster just Forum. be right up your alley and we could definitely yeah. team up and do something cool like that um i mean I when it. i first started doing collage i didn't really pick from uh comics because at that time my dad would have broken my hands so I was using like old encyclopedias, but later on, you know, through moves and things like that, I just started, you know, cutting up the comics. I mean, I, I mean, some were in good condition, it's just the way it is, but I like recreating. I mean, those are my paints. Mm -hmm. Those comic books are my paints. It's just the way it is. But um, I'll just, I'll go through these quickly. Uh, so yeah, this is Sea Monkeys versus Aquaman. And again, everything is from real comics and everything except for my logo, Strange Dreams, and that banner, and the verses. But mm -hmm. everything else is really from the comics, straight up. 
mm-hmm. uh, from the clouds, you know. So, but yeah, fantastic. I'll go through these fairly quickly. And then after the sea monkeys, and I think you have a picture of this one, is men grabbing other men, which happens in the comics. All the men are grabbing each other. But this is number three. And again, I have like limited edition, um, high quality prints, uh, edition of 25 each. And then here is, I'll just take it out. And I was pretty amazed that to be able to find like a perfect Wolverine in size to be choking Beavis and Butthead as Butthead farts right there. Perfect. I wish it was scratch and sniff. So these are the ones that I've released and I forgot. I think this is called lenticular hologram. That's what they're called. Someone told me recently lenticular hologram. You know, there's a lot of religious ones where Jesus like all of a sudden turns. Yeah. Yeah. David Cornell uh, does a lot of cool work with those. Oh, cool. Yeah, I've been I've been collecting for a long time. I haven't gotten to it, but I definitely have to check out David Crunell's. I know I know his name. I'm definitely familiar with his name. And now for the first time, I'll be sharing two comics that I have not shared with anybody yet. And the first one is Hulk versus Hulk. Oh shit! And I can't believe again. It's it's mind blowing when you find two images that work so well. I was like, no fucking way. I was like, Hulk versus Hulk. And this one really happy with the one (laughs) where this came out. Um, And in between, I'm trying to, I'm OCD. So I'm like, I want one that's a funny one. And then a a mashup character fight mashup. And then a funny one. So, but it's hard to like, try to plan that out. Sometimes when you just have shit that works, you just gotta, you gotta roll with it. You know, when you know it's right. It's right, and then table I'll table everything, move all the clippings because these two things go together really well, and everything else halts. Yep. Yep. Or else everything would take forever, and nothing would get done. You just got to go with your emotions. And then this is the last one that I have. I have a few on the way, including the attack of the senior citizens. That's going to be a fun one. <laughs> but the last one that I made is. Oh, I can smell the insurer already. Oh yeah. Swedish meatballs. Iron Man versus Rocketeer. Hell yeah. And uh, really happy with the way this one came out. I, I mean, love your clouds, man. This I got from like probably like a, ch- a children's book. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, back is from, you know, who knows? I don't even know anymore. I, I move so fast. A lot of people ask me, like, do you know where this comes from? Or do you know where that comes from? I'm like, if I tried to remember a document, they, I, it would take forever to make pieces. But um, one thing I will bring up, uh, a situation that I've had recently, and, you know, this is what makes it tough to become a full-time money-making collage artist, is that we're kind of in a situation that if we get picked up for commercial work, the copyright and imagery becomes a situation. Sure. And although I can safely say that I've done a lot of research, and I myself have never found any court cases of someone being sued for... The use, unless someone like use Coca Cola trademark straight up, but it's yeah. I, I, I like I dare anybody that's watching just to go out there and research, see if they can find a case where someone was sued who's a collage artist for copyright infringement. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to know too because I get that question a lot, and it's definitely like someone described it as like the Lord, the Lord Voldemort of collage making. You know, it's this kind of elephant serpentine snake in the room where everyone's like oh you know it's um, it, it holds us back from doing commercial work it certainly does and it's interesting because someone can go out there and draw a picture of charlie brown but it's illustrated it's different when you take that exact image from a book yeah. that's already been printed and and from what i understand uh just from information um 75 years for images to be royalty free for books and, and publications is 75 years. Good to know. And, and then you yeah. can use it. But um, I mean, very rarely, like, of course, I have pieces that have so many pop icons from ALF to Pac-Man to this, and they're all there in one thing. I mean, you know, I have a lawyer, and of course, you know, a lawyer is going to point out all the things that you can get in trouble for. That's what they're, they're trained to do. Yeah. My lawyer was like, you know, you may have to rethink how you approach your collages because – you know, you can get a, uh, a cease and desist. I mean, here's an example that could possibly happen. I have a piece. 
and someone that's related to the guy that created Pac-Man comes into this gallery and says, oh my God, there's Pac-Man. I don't want this happening. And then they would send me a cease and desist. The chances of that happening are probably slim because, I mean, this is on a piece that I hope to make a lot of money off of, but it's not being mass produced. It's one of a kind. Yeah, I think one of a kind. Yeah, well, I don't see. And then there's something called the parody law or the fair use law. Yes. And of course, I brought this up to my lawyer. My lawyer was like, well, that's a big gray area. Like, it's not much to stand on, I guess, in court if someone actually tried to sue you for the images that you use. But again, I dare anybody to go in and research to see if they can find any specific <laughs> cases of a collage artist being taken to court for the use of an image that they shouldn't have used. But that, I mean, that's everyone's homework because I've never found anything. I think uh, what, in our case, what would likely happen, not likely, but if um, something were to happen, like, it would probably be like a cease and desist kind of thing, you know? Right. Like, remember, they have to spend money, too, to do this. It would, yeah, it would, uh, yes. So, and, you know, we, mean, don't have, we don't have the money to fight, you know, like Disney and all that stuff, obviously. The worst, worst thing, that can, thing that can happen is say, oh, wait, I'll remove pac-man and i'll replace it and see this is the thing with my work i don't use glue i use tape mm -hmm. so there is a possibility for me to actually even on my finished pieces go backwards and if i needed to remove pac-man i could probably actually manipulate the piece and go backwards and, and do something if that should ever happen yeah i'll bring up something very interesting with mm -hmm. these comics that i've made these strange dreams and i'm using the cutouts a family member of mine put me in touch with someone that is a comic book artist. I won't, I won't say who, but I contacted them. I couldn't really get through to him, but I got through to his wife, who is his acting manager. And when I shared these pieces with her, the first thing that she asked was, do you have permission from the original artist to be doing this? Mm -hmm. And I got really frustrated, like immediately, yeah. you know, yeah. and I was like... Yeah, right. Like, okay, so I call Todd McFarlane and be like, hey, Todd, what's up, dude? Uh, is it cool if I use Spawn and this be like, <laughs> like, that's never going to happen. Yeah. I don't know Rob Leefield. I don't know any of these people. Um, there's no chance of us getting in touch with Mr. Kirby. So, mm -hmm. like, you yeah. know, but like at the same time, I, I realized I was like, all right, well, she's a comic book artist's manager. I get it. Like, it's frustrating for us because I feel like, as a uh, collage artist, a lot of times people don't really like, they don't get it. They don't understand, you know? Um, yeah. It's pretty weird. And like some people are like, well, well that's, you know, that's, that's, that's one person, you know? And I think like if she happened to be next to another comic book manager, like they might be down with it, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's interesting, but I get where she was coming from. And I recently did a piece I was hired to do a piece on commission, but it was a, a commercial job. And again, you know, they were like, listen, we want you to um, create something. And they gave me specific things to do. And then I did it. And then they showed the client and they're like, no, the client is afraid that you, and, and what I used were like cartoon characters from an educational book from like the eighties. Yeah. Like, and only a piece of it, a few characters. And they immediately, because they even told me like, we want people in this piece. Clients got back. They're like, we can't use this piece. They're freaked out about the copyright issues with the cartoon characters that you use. I'm like, oh my god! But you, you told me, and a lot of times you'll hear the like, you know, if you're if a collage uh, artist is hired to do a commercial job, usually the people that hire them will say, "We love what you do. We want you to do what we see you're you're already doing. We want yes. you to do just what do your Morgan thing, the vintage, the retro look, the crazy." And then you do it and you're like, well, now there's this, 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 and you're going to have to change this, this, this. And with collage, it's a little bit different than illustration, yeah. you know, to be able to go back and change things. And like you're physically, and if, if so, you're someone who uses glue, there's no going back. So it's, um, it's, it's a weird thing. Cause as you said, in illustration, someone could, you know, copy something and make a, a spoof out of it, you know, with like a parody law. Needless to say, pop, art is full of uh appropriation right. um and i personally think you know it's an important tool to under understand our world you know um when i do my commercial work i do try to avoid any recognizable images you know 
Right. Um, I don't think you would have to worry like at all about like a one-off piece, like when you have a massive collage and there's only one and like Pac-Man's in it. I wouldn't worry about that at all, you know. Um, like for my collage monsters, I think people would absolutely love and connect with, you know, a melting Spider-Man, uh, Iron Man hybrid or whatever. I would, right. I would absolutely love to do that, but I'm kind of like you're doing something, skirting it a little bit, you know. Remixed it. You're recreating the character itself. I'm like throwing them right there. I'm like Rocketeer verse, you know. But yeah, I mean. But if you got a season to desist, a like say it would... a, I mean, it is a homage. I am a comic book collector. I love comic books. For me, this is my appreciation and, and a version of my own comic book utilizing. I mean, you're right. I mean, someone's always going to have an opinion. I spoke to a lot yeah. of gallery uh, owners and, you know, for the most part, gallery owners won't care. But at the same time, you'll also we all notice as collage artists that you don't see a ton of collage in blue chip galleries like in chelsea or at art fairs very rarely will you see collage and it's yeah. just been kind of gaining momentum within art fairs and museums yeah and, um blue chip galleries or whatever but it still has a long way to go with grabbing the respect that it really deserves i agree and i think this is a, a battle that hopefully we could solve before we kick the bucket you know i think it's a, a long battle you know um, I too have spoken to, um, you know, a lawyer about this stuff and his kind of generalized advice would be like, it is, it is vague and that could be good for us as far as like the parody laws and stuff like that. And he also told me that probably the, likely the worst thing that would happen, you, you would get a cease and desist and they would be like, Hey, don't use that image. So, um, you know, don't quote me on this. I'm not a lawyer, but. I would think if you, you know, made say 20 different um, comic book covers, they could float around the universe for years. And like, maybe like only one of them would be like, you know, that's my rocket man, you know, yeah, like yeah. it, you know, um, it, it's tough. It's so tough because Disney in particular owns Marvel and um yeah, a whole them, bunch of other shit and it's like you really seek out shit they really have yes a whole group of people because oh, they ha yeah they have the budget to do that and they oh, kind of yeah. they own the stories and the images of all these super influential characters now for me i'm going to get on the soapbox about uh, comics for a minute because you know i'm a elementary school teacher and i you know see what these kids are wearing and talking about you know kids are still all about these characters that not only I grew up with, but like our parents grew up with. To me, these the Marvel superheroes, DC superheroes, they are like they're like the Greek gods. They are global phenomenon. They're not real, but they're globally in the hearts and minds of people all over the world. They have them tattooed on them. They have they teach moral stories and stuff like that. I they guarantee dress up like them. they dress up, they dress up with them. I guarantee yeah. we could find dozens of people who wanted to just, you know, jump off a bridge, but because, you know, Spider-Man wouldn't do it, they wouldn't do it. You know, it's real shit, you know? And, um, I think, uh, it's unfortunate that so many of these characters and stories are just like owned by one massive, um, corporation you know i remember even being like a small child when i was in elementary school and i remember learning about how like you you can't schools couldn't paint a picture of mickey mouse in the hallway and stuff like that really yeah yeah that you know that's like you know copyright infringement right and even in my own little head i'm like but that's like that's like our world that's like our it's like our culture you know like yeah. that's it's it is pop, pop. It, it is pop. like mass produced and whatever, but like that is that's like us, these these things, these characters, you know. That's like it's in our DNA, you know. So um and as far as um I haven't d d dove too deep into the gallery stuff yet. I think these um comic book monsters are gonna be my first push to try to um get into some galleries. Um I think on the whole, like when people say collage, they think of just like scrapbooking, you know, 
I almost, when people ask me what kind of art I make, I just say like, oh, I'm like a surrealist. And they're like, oh, you know. <laughs> That's uh, way to go. Uh, so mysterious. But if I say collage, you're like, oh, yeah. So you're like, uh, you know, you're all oh, my aunt does that. You know, she she puts the, takes out the Sunday funnies and glues it to cigar boxes, you know. Hey, your aunt sounds awesome, but that's not what I do. You know, that's that's also, you know, I just quickly when I used to uh, do live collage events, I haven't done any in a while. But, you know, we would have, you know, Tampa set up and a bunch of materials would come in and collage and, and stuff like that. A lot of people who were involved in the Brooklyn Collage Collective at that time, you know, wouldn't be caught dead at one of those. So like, mm. yeah, I work in front of anybody like and also they would feel like, you know, that's cheapening the uh, the art form, the medium. But it, there is a fine line. I mean, for me, first of all, uh, collage is very therapeutic. For, mm. From finding the publications to organizing the publications to cutting the images, to putting them together and seeing the final piece. There's so many different stages. And uh, I enjoy every single one of them. Um, I've been called uh, a purist before because I have a problem with printing images and, and using them. Like I'm like, it has to be from the source. It has to be from the source. And it kind of like holds me back, but it also, without that way of thinking, my work would not be the same. So my, my outcome at the end is from pushing myself to only utilize what I actually have. I mean, for these comics, I had to print out the title because I made it up and stuff like that. But I'm a little bit of a freak when it comes to that. But um, I did pull some of my, I got some cool comics to show you quickly. Um, just letting you know, my favorite comic book character is actually a character named Lobo. Oh, yeah, I know Lobo. Big Lobo guy. Um, but only when Sweet. Simon Beasley draws him with, with yeah. Keith Giffen. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing miniseries. And, and I love, he actually gets killed. He goes to heaven. They throw him out of heaven. Does he doesn't say Lobo goes to heaven? Yeah, yeah he nice. kicks the shit out of everybody. And then they send him to hell. And he kicks the shit out of everyone in hell. And then they, they <laughs> like, we don't want him either. So they, <laughs> he's This is the cool shit, boys and girls. This is what we're talking about. Beats the shit out of everybody in hell. Let's go. Just figured I'd show this. Here's a really old, and I have a bunch of these. A really cool. old uh, Mad Magazine is from 64. Um, but I have a bunch of these. Um, my, my mom did a good job of, look at this. <laughs> look at that illustration of Ringo man I know that's freaking hilarious look at that that's great that's something and like I would never cut that up I that's yeah. something I wouldn't cut up I actually have a Batman here um eight balls a great comic too um, oh yeah I have yet to pick one up I, I want to though uh yeah have you ever read Wilson I have not uh they actually wound up making a movie with um Woody Harrelson but it's this guy who kind of just like, there's no filter. He just tells you like any, anything that's on mm -hmm. his mind. He just sits down and just like starts having conversation. But um, yeah, what's his name again? Uh, yeah, Daniel Klaus. Uh, if you don't yeah. know who Daniel Klaus Daniel is. Daniel Klaus, yeah. Mm -hmm. out. But um, this Batman is very interesting. Um, and I won't go through it because it takes too long. But there's no text in this comic whatsoever. Sick. Zero. It's just pictures. And I've never seen a comic like that. I was just kind of going through, you know, cutting up comics. I'm like... Wow, this is really, really weird. There's no lettering. Here's like an old school Turtles comic. Oh, that yeah, real early Turtles. I think I have that one. Yeah. It's awesome. Basically, they get sucked. Look at that illustration. Amazing. They get they, sucked. In this they world were game that, changers, man. I didn't know oh, this, because, yeah. but that they're, I think they're one of the biggest selling independent comics like ever. Look like, at that. It's so cool. So what happens is something happens and they get sucked into this world where everyone is just like this continuous highway and system of roads. There's no land. There's mm -hmm. just everyone constantly driving. It's such a crazy, it's like the, uh, it's sick dude. But yeah, Casey Jones, it, like gets sucked into that world and he loses his mind. And then I brought, I got some really old school guys here like this. Oh, homegrown. Yeah. That's, um, um, is it uh, Chrome? Uh, yeah. Chrome. It is. Chrome. It is. I just watched, uh, it's inspiring. I just watched um, American Splendor, the movie last night. You know, have you heard of it? It's with uh, Paul Giamatti, right? Yeah. Um, basically, he's like out collecting jazz records in real life. It's a doc, it's not a documentary, it's a movie about him. Biography. I don't know. What you, you know, I anyway. think I tried to watch it, and I think because of the way he talked, 
Yeah, there's a yeah, he has like a very uh trouble talking, but basically Robert Crum and him were at the same garage sale looking at records. And someone was like, Hey, you gotta check out his comics because they both collect comics. Then they became friends. And um um Harvey Picar, the guy who wrote American Splendor, just <laughs> absolutely hated his life. <laughs> he ends up just like writing about his like kind of like crappy existence in Cleveland as a file file clerk and sends uh you know his writing to um Robert Crumb and he's like I love it and he he wrote it so Harvey Pekar was more or less one of the first guys to just do like normal life like slices of life comics illustrated by Crumb who's his stuff is wild everybody's sweating and hairy and like panicking and you know. Amazon women. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. There's a lot of depressed comic book writers. I think like Chris Ware is very depressed and his stuff. I don't know if you, you're familiar. Yeah, with definitely. Chris. Um, I, um, Unreal. remind me, what did he do? What did Chris Ware do? Uh, uh, he did a lot. Um, he, he has a very specific style. Jimmy, the world, like, let's say what would be the first thing that pops up for Chris Ware? Before I forget, while you're looking that up, I think this um, cool like Rizo zine would would be a potential solve for some of our uh, commercial collage problems. Where like, if if you need like certain elements, you could do your own illustration and like and put it in. Because I I know a hundred percent how you feel where you want it to be this like purest thing. But like, this is dope too. It is, you know, and they're probably just like procreate uh, drawings, or you could draw and do stuff on old paper. Um, Lance Letcher, who's been on the podcast, he likes to collage with like um, a lot of stuff that people had drawn on and stuff before, you know, like old coloring books and stuff, and having that extra layer of like. I don't know what else to call it, but other like information, you know, like stained paper or stuff that's been colored on, drawn on top of all the crazy stuff in the background that's already collaged. Like adding that all in there is just, this is more information, man. It just adds to this, like, holy shit, what am I looking at? Yeah, no, situation. I, I enjoy that style too. I mean, I've been, ever since I've been a collage artist, I've never really stayed with one style. I mean, there are things that I, I, return to a lot of architecture and stuff like that and using comic books but i'm always looking for new ways to express you know uh my work and i'm always looking to evolve and 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 change the game a little bit but i would just say in regards to anybody who is a collage artist and looking to get commercial work unfortunately for most of those things it's best to like i said either use publications that are 75 years old or older um but or just Unfortunately, you go online and I forgot Upsplash or whatever. There are certain sites you can use image-free stuff and print it out. But I would always always say keep the links, keep the sources, because a lot of magazines have done work for you know Watch International and different magazines publications for ed- editorials. It's just best to keep uh, all that information if you're going the commercial route. Um, yeah, um, what I started doing with my comic monsters is uh, and this is pretty much what you're saying is I've been um, keeping the covers and stuff that I used. It's just a quick way to have a file. So I have an envelope. So if I got 25 different pieces in a comic book monster, I um, keep the covers and I file them away just in a, in a box or an envelope. To be able to answer the question. If someone says, what is this from? And actually have the answer, which you would have for these pieces is pretty damn impressive. Uh, Mm. My pieces I mean, you have pieces that consist of hundreds of pieces as well. Yeah. But like for me, I, there's just no way. I'm just like, I just keep on going. Yeah. If so, I had an assistant, I would be like, yo, I'll make the spreadsheet up and we'll put it in the program at the show. But well, I don't have that, you know? Yeah, that yeah. that's that, that's wild. I wanted to ask you something before I forget because yeah, we're the we're the ADD boys for sure. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> Uh, one thing I thought of for my the originals of my comic monsters, I'm wondering if this, you've thought about this at all, was making my own um, gem cases for 
for the the thing. Well, not making my own, but you know, you could probably like bulk order. You know, when you get like a comic book graded, right? You know, buy the case and then print my own like Red Wizard. You know, it's official. Uh, you know, nine point eight um piece and then you know get a little hologram sticker and stick it on there and like in case the That's cool. i like that yeah i use mylar um mm -hmm. but and then i use the i forgot what you know what as a matter of fact i have the information right here boom check this out so the backings that i use is this the backing yes these are the backings so it's got uh, back. over street um endorsed by overstreet which i guess is like you know really respected company that makes uh, stuff for comics yeah you see the really nicer older comics in those uh, mylar bags they have they're more rigid right oh yeah no they're completely rigid and, and these are beautiful like uh it's acid free and of course you know when i first started making collage i didn't take acid free seriously um and here are the uh the mylar bags that i use also overstreet um but these are like, you know, for Those real legit. expensive comics. Um, and so I started taking uh, acid free more seriously. And so when I finish pieces, and I actually have it here, conveniently, this is deacidification spray. And I got this from a company called Talus, and they are experts on paper. And what this does Holy is it shit. neutralizes the acid properties in the paper, giving it longevity. Holy crap, dude. It's expensive. They're like this. I dude, I kid you not. I think this was like seventy five bucks. Serious? Would you just got to miss? You just like missed it, or how, how much you got to hit it? And 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 back, uh, front and back. Uh, anybody can find this. What's uh, this stuff called? Deacidification spray, and it will neutralize the acid properties in in because I used to somehow convince myself that everything that's in a magazine and in a book is is acid free. Not the truth absolutely no. not the truth at all stay away uh, from that rubber cement too kids yeah well i used to <laughs> love that stuff <laughs> but anyways yeah i don't again i i don't use glue because it's just like there's no going back there's no going back so what i do is i use my tape but then awesome that i have this here this is i bought some of that yeah the, oh, your last show nice. yeah mm -hmm. 3m scotch all it is is it's on wax paper and it's double-sided tape, and I use little pieces. And it's very forgiving. I mean, basically what it is, it's almost like rubber glue. You can ball it up. But it's it's very forgiving. If you use just a little bit of it, I mean, you can go backwards. Even Have you seen this shit? Tape. Is that one full sheet? It's express. It It's a full sheet, and it's a more of like a double-sided scotch tape. So... You could take one layer off and you could put a whole, you know, figure or shape or whatever and like right. you know, cut through it and mount it. And they have rolls of it, too. Yeah, that's um, great. I buy this other stuff from um, same thing from uh, uh, Etsy shop. But, um, yeah, I even use some tape that's actually doubly used for uh, taping two pace to your head. I, I kid you not. Um, because it's acid free. You went all in on the comic book hair project, didn't you, man? Yeah, I mean, I could do that for myself. <laughs> Put some give you some She-Hulk, bro. Give you that She-Hulk, <laughs> that green uh, Jerry curl thing. The um, to that hair piece, though, which is actually it's hard to wrap your mind around how big forty inches in diameter is, but it's big. Yeah, that, that does not fit in the trunk of a car. Big. So yeah. basically, I finished that piece, and it's thousands of cuts of just hair from characters within comics. But I'm making a square. And this one is just going to have all capes, all fabric. And it's and, and there's a lot less fabric in capes because not all superheroes wear capes. So I've been, this has been, I've been collecting capes for like three years now. I want to, I want to talk to you <laughs> about this because we've kind of, we've talked about the, the limitations of collage, or, you know, or the, well, not limitations, but the, the trouble. One thing I want to explore more of, you know, is the the collectability of comics and the whole scene and 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 the people that collect comics right like and there's all the comic book shows so right having what i'm excited about is having comic book themed artwork 
I can now start going to comic book shows and conventions and tabling there. Right. Instead of going to my local street fair and trying to convince the lady that's buying pickles, you know, to buy my artwork, you know, um, right. I'm really excited to start hitting next year. Some of these comic book shows as an artist and for them to be like, Oh shit, Wolverine versus Beavis and Butthead. Hell yeah. You know, you know those, they are art collectors. So that's what people don't realize. Like, they're those they are art collectors they buy the original artwork and stuff you know here's an interesting perspective and i didn't even think about this so i brought some of these to a place called desert island books uh, and mm -hmm. if you're in brooklyn you know desert island books because it's one of the greatest book uh, stores to ever exist anyways i brought you know some of these prints of these Is it a comic uh, book shop or just a, like a big ass bookstore book, graphic novels okay. all illustration zines you know indie everything and uh I told him, and when I explained to him that this, there was no comic behind it, that it was just a cover, he got really disappointed. He was like, you know, you bring these to a comic book. He, he wasn't being mean, but he was being very blunt. He's like, you know, you bring this to a comic book shop and you're putting them next to another comic. The, per, the first thing that the person is going to think is that this is a comic. They're not mm -hmm. going to think that it's just flat. And they're going to be disappointed when they come up and buy it. And I tell them, hey. It's just a comic book concept cover. And I was like, wow, you know, I never really thought about that, but it makes complete sense that I guess I too, if I it was like, oh, cool, look at this, men grabbing other men. I can't mm. wait to see what the hell is going on there. <laughs> only to find out that there's... Sounds like my kind of rag. Yeah, yeah only the men on the front. <laughs> uh, so I was like, oh, shit. I mean, maybe I should make a sticker that just specifically says like uh, comic book cover Collage comic book cover concepts. That's a lot of. Uh, that's all C's. Yeah, you could. That's I think you could. I think people would buy them as as uh, posters or prints too. You know. Right. But it was an interesting thing, and I was like, I guess yeah. it depends on if they're next to other comics. Naturally, you would believe that it is a full comic. But then I thought to myself, he's like, you ever thought about like doing the full comic? And I'm like, well, a comic is like what, like thirty pages average, and to like create yeah. Comic. I don't think it has to. I don't think it has to be. You it know, have to be. That's true. Yeah. Like to to create each cell through collage would be a, a fairly large well, undertaking. I don't think there's any reason why you couldn't just make a comic book, twenty four pages of all covers, and you then totally cut. That's what, what but the collection. Yeah. Like after the first twenty or thirty, I should put out a book of that collection. Exactly, that and then. As you're doing it, you're probably going to come up with little stories or um, gags and stuff that you I, can throw in there, you know, with I, collage. You something know? that I didn't think to show you. And hold on one second. Let me see if I can find these quickly because it's pretty interesting. I, I have started my own comic book, but in a very different way. Uh, let's see if I can find it quickly. Aha, uh -huh. all right, so what I started doing a while ago is I started cutting out cells from comics that didn't have any text, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I started to actually create my own comic book, and this paper is um, vinyl record cover sleeves. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like that, co that, that type of newsprint, you know, a little bit off-white. And so basically what I did was, and I'll just show you, uh-oh, that's stuck to that. No good. Let's see if I can find page one. Okay, so this is the first page. So basically what I did was I curated cells with no text where you create the idea of what's going on in your sure. own. You write 100%. your own script. And so I started, I think I only got, was like, all from different comics. You know. Yeah, it's no awesome. No words. And I think I got up to page. And also to yeah. make sure that all the cells are curated where it looks good and makes sense in your own mind. But I think I got to page maybe like 10. Yeah. That one actually has a little bit of text, but it's not like a word bubble. It's not like, it's just a location. Actually it says Brooklyn. So yeah. So I started making my own comic where you make your own, like there's no word. So you make your own storyline. So I yeah, hope dude. I I think you're I think you're a hundred percent on point with that. You know, because like if you take the collage world and break it down, and we've talked about how there's all sorts of weird books. Some don't have words. 
some is just art um some are like weird stream of conscious things um so you have for the comic book collectors you have the books right then you have like the original artwork which typically used to be drawn on like uh, uh like 11 by 17 bristol board right. you know so you could do all you could just collage on the board you know you could uh, and then sell. it doesn't matter what size it is you could fit it to what you want to sell you what could you fit want. it to what you want or you could just right. or you could just sell the actual i got some boards right here hold on it's it's a decent it's decent um it's it's thick enough too you know where yeah it's bristle it's it's pretty thick and it says you know comic book art board and it has a ruler lines title issue all this stuff this is what a lot of those cats a lot of them still still work in this format so yeah. you could even do original work on something like this because people buy this stuff you know the, the top tier collectors are always out looking for um the original comic art i had the chance to buy for like a hundred dollars an entire page of the first issue of oh christ am i getting goosebumps thinking about it um uh the walking dead oh no shit my friend or my neighbor was like hey i'll show you this comic book and it was walking dead number one we're living in miami and he's like oh the the guy who did the cover in the first issue of walking dead is going to be at this um comic con in miami which um i don't know Miami has a ton of culture and no culture all at the same time. But right, right, right. We were the only people in line to see this guy, and he wasn't right. even showing his Walking Dead stuff because this was like 2009, maybe. Oh, man. And when my neighbor pulled out his Walking Dead one for him to sign, he was like surprised that he even had the thing. I didn't even know it was a comic before a show. Yeah, the first issue is intense. Um, I'm not. A, I'm not really a zombie guy though. I'm more of a science fiction guy and I, and I like the weird indie stuff nice. so i think where my head's at when i want to sell to comic book collectors i do want to have uh books available um whether it's completely collaged books like this is the weird thing so my favorite comic book shop in buffalo is called um gutter pop and you know they sell zines like this and they sell indie comics you know the works and I think for most collectors, even though these are like, you know, more like not quite one of a kind, but close, if it's in this format, right? this is like, people are like, I just think people are like, oh, I'll give that a shot. Why not? You know, people come there with a couple hundred bucks to blow. I'll give it a shot. Oh, it, oh, Beavis and Butthead. You know, and I think if they open it up and they just see a bunch of cool shit, like they're not going to care. And they're like, I have a comic in my yeah. hand yeah you know um so even my comic book monsters uh i plan on whether i plan on um making a book with them i don't think it's gonna it's not gonna read like a comic book but i want people when they come to the show to walk out with something that looks just like this that it l looks like a comic book like a you know what i mean because right. it's a comic book theme thing. So even if it's a program it says about me and the pictures, I I just think if it's this dimensions and it has pages, um, that changes things for the collector. And um it's for my own comic that I'm writing, I had to let go of the hipster in me. And you know, the industry standard for a lot of comic book stuff art now is procreate on the iPad. Right. Everything I do collage is analog. And I tried, dude, I was like studying how artists ink. I was looking into, I was a big Ralph Steadman fan in high school. So I was like splattering ink, trying all this stuff, really non-conventional. And I'm like, dude, with an iPad, I could stick it in my backpack and do it in the freaking car wash, you know? But I have brought collage into it. So this is a layout of my, this is one of my more popular uh, uh, issues of Microdose. It's a six panel strip. And, um, and you just posted that, right? I did, yeah. Um, 
So if anyone wants these $40 uh, shipped to your home for free, and this is going to help kind of fundraise for printing microdose as a 24 page comic. And I, yeah. I, coll I have a collage background and just this little gesture of being like, Oh shit, well, what am I gonna do for background? I got some friends that want some prints and I used one of my favorite backgrounds that I collage with. And then just boom, the freaking light bells went off uh, light, light bells, <laughs> the light bells went off and I got all these other ideas, how to incorporate collage, um, in, into my work, um, in, into the actual, um, physical comic book. And I think the, the, um, the Jack Kirby stuff is a huge inspiration because like a lot of his collage panels are mostly just collage with handwritten text bubbles. Right. You know? Um, so I'll probably do a, a, a bit of that as well. There's so much cool stuff out there, man. And I think, people love getting like the weird surprise comic book. You probably have a story I would imagine where, you know, your dad took you to the comic book shop or a show when you were little and you wanted, you know, X-Men or whatever. The price is right. It was the price is right. on some weird, you know, comic book, you grabbed it and you open it up and there's gore and there's boobs and there's like funny stuff. And to me, that's what stuck with me. I was like, oh, yeah. what on earth is this? This is like not on TV. It's not in the movies. Uh, this is I just wild it. stuff. This is this is a comic, one of my favorite independent comics. I guess it's not even independent. Maybe it is. I don't know. Gun Fury. And basically, he's Batman, but his name is Buttman. <laughs> and uh, he has like the poop mobile. I think Robin's name is Throbin. <laughs> and yeah, here he is with his... Hold on. You can see right here. You see that poop mobile. He's flying. He's got the butthole right there on his... Wow, right on the chest. Right no one there. escapes that. What does it say? It says no one escaped the Cape Crucifer. Hmm. Oh my god! He's, he's calling him Butt Man right there. Butt That's Man's. hilarious, dude. But like the artwork is awesome. Like yeah, it's really, really good. It's such a <laughs> shit. See, yeah, hey, that's talk. and it looks harmless on the front. You're like, oh, look at this guy. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Uh, Butt Man and Throbbing, my kind of comic. But uh, yeah, I mean, e comics play a big uh, role and in, in influence me in, in how I work, and um, I love using it. There's so many great things to look at as you're going through them, and uh, yeah, we're on the same page. Hopefully, at some point next year, I can maybe come up and and join you in some of these, you know, shows and stuff. That'd be great, man. That'd be great. I've been, uh, I uh, last we spoke, we talked, we talked about you know the Brooklyn Collage Collective um, that you you run right and i've been dragging my feet on doing one uh for buffalo because uh i don't know i, I guess it, i guess it kind of feels like a, a lot of work it's a lot it's a lot of work it is yeah, but um different personalities it's it's you don't realize until you actually get into what it's all about you know um so but it's, it's but if i do something like that and it's not just like hey i am the red wizard and i have this friend morgan and other like comic people right like if that i feel like the title helps being like this is this is the organization you just got to work with the right people you got to vet vet very well because you never know who you're dealing with well we're a small town uh, you know and i'm um well it, our area there's probably only a million people you know in all of like western new york and probably not a ton of of collage artists so um i think i'll just work with who, who we have, right? You know, right. You know Good uh, but we do have a pretty vibrant art scene. We have a uh, national, like a maybe globally, we have really awesome, two very awesome art museums. We have the Albright Knox, which is um, huge, huge modern art collection. You know, everything from Jackson Pollock to Judd, you know, all that, all that stuff, you know. So um, we got this. We got the scene for it. We got the scene for it. The numbers, I'm I'm not sure, but um, I would love to have. I would love to be in a show with you, man. I would absolutely love to be in a show with you, and some and, and Voltron, Voltron together, a big uh, collage body. Yeah, we'll have 100%. to talk about that at some point. Yeah, man. Yeah, totally. yeah, let's get working on that. We'll have to think about what to do. And I would love to come to New York and check that shit out, man, because it's been a minute, and um, 
I'd imagine that uh, there's a lot of cool stuff going on over there, art wise, man. Never stops. That's sick. Yeah. Um, so Morgan, um, is there anything else you wanted to mention, man? I think uh, we had a great combo. Where could yeah. people find you, man? Where could uh, how um, could people find your work? You can find me on Instagram, Morgan underscore Jesse underscore Lappin, L-A-P-P-I-N. Um, also on my website, morganlappin.com. And, and I have prints available. I have originals available, uh, a lot of news updates. But mostly every, all the you know the updates go through Instagram, but stuff on sale at my website. And uh, Is that where we could find your uh... – your your collage or your collage comics yes on your website yes and awesome. um yeah a lot more to come a lot of I'm, I'm glad i was able to share some of these new comics and i'll be uh you know posting those soon and i'm um, excited to move forward with it and uh excited to work on that voltron idea so i'm pumped man i was just i was so happy we got to talk i don't really have any comic book friends uh that i could talk to and i mean most of my collage friends are, you know, through Instagram and the internet. I'm, I'm, I've been yearning for a conversation like this. So yeah, me thank too. you so much, man. Yeah. Thank you for having me. All right, guys, go out there, cut some shit up, read some comics. Peace. Boom. Hasta la pasta. Whoops. There we go.